Folks, I have some breaking news in the biology of camels. Did you know that camels' humps do not actually hold water? You see, it turns out that camels' humps actually contain a lot of fat. Now, the question you might be asking, and that scientists have asked for years, where do they get that fat? Well, it's from taking the fat from the enemies of the cavalry units that they defeat on the battlefield. You see, in Age of Empires 2 DE, the Camel Rider is a very special unit that is only available to a small subset of civilizations in the game. And it serves a very unique purpose. It is a mobile anti-cavalry unit that is also very quick that can be used to hunt down cavalry, especially heavy cavalry from your opponent, right? Halberdiers are slow, camels are fast, and that gives them an important role to play. However, camels are not without their flaws. And in this video, we're going to be discussing the limitations of the unit and how you can best think of incorporating it into your army because camels are a gold line unit in contrast to the halberdier. So you're going to want to be careful with how you deploy them. Because of that, when we're thinking about the camel, we don't just want to think about the unit itself. We want to think about the idea of a camel civilization. So we're going to be looking at the civilizations in the game that can best not only have the strongest camels, but can support their camel armies so that you can get on the ladder and get after. Okay, now before I jump into this tier list, one of the things that I want to do is I want to put the camel line in context, and we're going to take a look at that right here by first starting with the, the camel rider, right? The initial unit that you get. As we can see, it's a unit that if you have bloodlines, if you have all of your upgrades, right? It's doing six base damage. It has pretty good HP, right? 100 base, 120 with bloodlines, which is a pretty big increase in terms of HP. And one of the other things we can see about the unit, it doesn't have any base armor. So you can already start to tell that this unit may have some difficulty when it comes to sustaining damage. Now, we can look at the bonus damage because that is really where the Camel Rider shines. It is doing plus nine damage against cavalry, plus five against camelry, and then some damage against ships as well. Now, when we move on to the heavy camel rider, we're seeing something of a marked improvement here in terms primarily of the bonus damage. We are seeing 20 more HP added. We're seeing one more base melee, no base, no base armor in either pierce or melee, but we're seeing a really, really nice jump in bonus damage. We're seeing double the bonus damage against cavalry, not quite double against camelry, right? We're seeing more damage against ships, fishing ships, and also we are seeing the damage come in against the Mameluke if you're up against Saracens. That can be kind of nice, though Mamelukes are already doing anti-cavalry damage, so probably not the most advisable matchup there. Now, we can take this one step forward and look at the Imperial Camel Rider. This is a unit that is unique to the Indians, and we'll get to this a bit more when we look at the Indian civilization. But as you can see, the bonus damage is the same. The only thing that's changing on the Camel Rider is that you're getting two more base attack, which is actually pretty nice. It's a nice increase there. And you are getting an extra 20 HP for a grand total of 160 HP. So you have a tankier unit. You are missing plate barding. We'll talk about Indians. So you can see the melee armor is a little bit lower, but it's going from, going from three to two. Again, we'll talk about this when we get into the units and look at how they perform. And that's what I want to do right now. I want to take a moment and talk about how the units perform against their their most basically the the unit that they're designed to counter how they counter heavy cavalry okay to show you guys exactly what we mean here when it comes to looking at how camels play against knights throughout the ages what i want to do here let's take a look at castle age and see what this trade looks for 
our camel rider and our knight both fully upgraded. Let's check it out. Okay, so as we can see, right, here we go. The units are trading with one another. And the knight looks like it's a bit lower in HP, but look at the camel's HP. It's actually a bit lower than you'd expect. And we see here, ending with 10 HP, what we have is that the camel rider basically is killing the knight. And if the knight had one more hit, then the knight would be able to kill the camel rider and it would be a completely even trade. So here we are in Castle Age and it's actually almost an even trade between these units. So you can imagine, say, if we had a Magyar knight in this scenario instead of a Hun knight and there weren't any attack upgrades already on the camel, well, you could see what the position we'd be in. Okay, so now let's take a look at the Heavy Camel Rider versus a fully upgraded Cavalier in Imperial Age. Okay, as you can see, the HP on the Cavalier is going down pretty significantly, and the Camel Rider is actually, right, this Heavy Camel Rider, we can see the difference now. Going up against a Knight, we're one hit away, but the Heavy Camel Rider going up against a Cavalier has almost half of its HP remaining. This is a massive, massive, massive advantage. Okay, now what I want to do, the last thing I want to show you here, is I want to show you how they stack up with Paladins. So let's go ahead, we'll get to that in just a moment. Okay, now let's see how the Heavy, heavy Camel Rider does against the Paladins. Okay, right, so we take a look here, we see the HP, and as you can tell, the HP is pretty even here, and we're seeing a fight that basically resembles something close to what we saw in Castle Age. The Heavy Camel Rider, right, with 20 HP left, it should be able to survive two more shots from a Paladin, but that second shot is going to be doing a lot of overkill, so it's really probably something like one and a quarter or something like that. So as we can see, the Paladin, it's still going to lose, but it is a much better unit. Uh, the Heavy Camel Rider is having a lot less hit points left over after that. If we think, right, when we thought about the Camel Rider, it was 10 hit points out of 120. This, for the Heavy Camel Rider, it's 20 hit points out of 140, so it's still a good improvement. But again, the Heavy Camel Rider is going to beat the Paladin, but it's more Cavalier, right? That is the really important issue here that Cavaliers are just much weaker to the Heavy Camel Rider than Paladins. Okay, everybody, so now we are ready to about jump into the tier list. And what I want to do, as usual, is I want to set up what the factors that we are going to be considering for the best camel civilizations. And I'm doing this video a little bit differently just to let you know, as you can see, we don't have the normal S through A through B tier, that kind of thing. The reason for that is because we're only dealing with 12 civilizations. And because we're dealing with 12 civilizations, I actually want to take the time to really distinguish them in rank from one another. And so in this video, we're actually going with a star rating system. As you can see, a five star civilization. This is the ultimate camel civilization or civilizations in the game, right? The really the bluest of the blue bloods. Now we get into the four and a half or the four star. This is still a blue blood camel civilization category, but they are just gonna be a step below any of the five, civ five star civilizations. When we get into the green, we have, these are our three star civilizations. They have very good camels and some really, uh, really nice viable armies that you can field with them. And when we start to get into the two stars and of course the one stars, that's where we're going to see some major, major limitations. So let me get into a bit more specifics on what we're actually considering here. So the camel is primarily a defensive unit specializing versus cavalry and where you're getting written where you're really getting the value is from heavy cavalry now camels have some issues right they're vulnerable to spears that do a lot of bonus damage against them and they're very vulnerable to ranged units as well because 
They just don't have any base pierce armor, and that's pretty massive. Additionally, because of that low pierce armor, camels have very limited offensive capability because they cannot raid under town centers very easily, and their low base damage makes it difficult for them to pick off villagers. And not only that, but the fact that they do so little base damage also means that when it comes to taking out buildings, they just, generally speaking, don't have that ability. And that's a really big deal for a camel civilization or for an offensive unit in general because being able to, say, take out enemy production buildings can be really massive in terms of making sure that they can't field an army. Being able to take out town centers, getting villager kills is very important and it just makes the camel ride it really... Right, The statistics really center it as a defensive unit. Now, the camel does play out a bit differently in Castle Age and Imperial Age, though it's mostly similar. It just improves on some things that it's bad at in Castle Age. In Castle Age, as we saw from the testing videos, camels are a pretty solid counter to knights, but they're not an overwhelming counter. And I really want to emphasize that, that in Castle Age... When it comes to camels versus knights, if you do get caught out at a numbers disadvantage or a technology disadvantage, knights are actually going to be pretty decent. Secondly, in Castle Age, you have a very, very poor raiding unit for the camel. Again, for the reasons I discussed just a little while ago, you just don't have the pierce armor and you don't have the damage. And this is not the kind of unit that you're going to be able to, say, win with a strong castle age push which is often something you can do with knight civilizations now in the imperial age it starts to look a little different we see that the heavy camel rider is a fantastic counter to cavalier and it's good against paladins but the great thing at least in terms of 1v1s is that paladin is pretty rare to see and even if you do see it it's a really expensive option that generally can't be maintained and Heavy Camel Rider is still going to win, so this is a really good unit to have in 1v1s, and even, say, if you're in a team game, you still have a nice counter. Now, having said that, you're going to be very weak to Halberdiers, and also weak to Archers, right? The Pierce Armor and Blast Furnace do improve the unit's offensive abilities and raiding abilities as well. Basically, a heavy a heavy camel rider in imperial age can kill an arbalist about one hit faster than a castle age camel rider can kill a crossbowman that's basically how it works out so the pierce armor and blast furnace are helping you a bit but you're still going to be pretty weak to range units it's still going to be a bit more difficult to raid and get villager kills but you are going to be doing it at a better clip because when you think about killing villagers, whereas your unit is gaining HP and base damage, villagers, their armor and their HP is not changing, so you're going to be able to kill them a lot easier. But it's still not going to be as effective as, say, a knight. So what does this mean for a good camel civilization? Well, good camel civilizations are going to be able to improve the unit's performance. Remember, in this tier list, we're thinking about camels more as the bulk of your army, and not just a unit that you kind of mix in here or there, right? So if you're really going to be a camel civilization, you need good camels. And we're going to think about that in terms of performance. We're also going to think about in terms of affordability. And I'd say the last sort of performance aspect of this, anything that allows the camel to have an expanded mission capabilities, right? Can it do things that other civilizations, camels just can't do? Now, we also want to see strong supporting units. Camels, because they're so weak to range units and spears, this is not a unit that does very well on its own. Typically, you need some unit to pair it with if it is going to be an offensive force and your main gold unit. And so you got to remember the sort of holy trinity of army compositions in Age of Empires as you get into the late game is one gold unit, one trash unit, and a siege unit. And if you're fielding an army of camels, that's your gold unit. So you need good support units in terms of your trash unit. And so 
having good skirmishers, having good spears, that's really helpful for a camel civilization and something you're going to find that you really need. And lastly, economic bonuses, right? These are going to help you facilitate production for this gold unit, but also facilitate the supporting army that you're going to need. So these are our attributes and what we're going to think about. And so with that, I want to go ahead and jump into the video. So let me just pull up my notes here and perfect. Let's get started. So we're going to start off here, right? We're we have this list, but we're not going to go in alphabetical order here. And this is going to be a, a sort of countdown, but we're going to go up here. So where's our first sieve that we're going to be looking at? Well, we have 12. Let's see what we can do, right? The worst camel civilization in the game has got to be... It's got to be the cumins, right? So... Here's the deal with humans. You do get fully upgraded camel riders in Castle Age, and that's good. But the problem is that you totally miss access to the heavy camel rider. And as we saw, the bonus damage that you get from that, the HP you get from that, it's really, really important. Right? This unit is one that's really getting you the most value as an Imperial Age counter to Heavy Cavalry. So, if you're missing the Heavy Camel Rider, that's a severe, severe downgrade. Especially given that it is a unit that if your opponent gets a Night Mass on you, still might actually lose. So, we gotta factor that in. Now, I will say some nice things about the Cumans in that... One of the great things about them is that you're not paying for husbandry. You're basically getting it as a free bonus um, in terms of your Castle Age Camel Riders. Your Camel Riders will be faster in Imperial Age, but again, you miss Heavy Camel Rider. Again, part of the reason you probably miss Heavy Camel Rider is for balance purposes, and that if you had a bunch of really, really fast Heavy Camels, that could be pretty overpowering for a Cuman player. So you basically are getting free husbandry in Castle Age, and that can be pretty nice for hunting down enemy knights. And the other really important thing for humans is that you have much cheaper stables. So you might be able to get units out in a in a in a quicker fashion by having more production buildings. It's still going to be a bit taxing on your economy to do so. But with humans, you might be able to catch up. The problem is that because camel riders are such a poor offensive unit in Castle Age, you actually don't want to be teching too hard into this unit, especially when you don't have Heavy Camel Rider in Imperial Age. So, again, it's just for Cumans, it's just not the kind of unit for them that you want to make the bulk of your army. You're probably much more, much more likely to go down the Heavy Cavalry line or make something like Kipchaks. So, unfortunately, Cumans are going to get the one star. Now, Next up in the one and a half star tier, right? Because there's only one star down below. We're going to have to put the Ethiopians. Now, the Ethiopians are pretty limited themselves. You're missing bloodlines and you're missing the last armor upgrade. And so what that means is that when it comes to fighting in Castle Age, right? We saw that a fully upgraded Camel Rider basically can only absorb one more hit from a from a knight so if you have ethiopian camels you're going to be doing worse than that you're basically a unit that's just on par with a knight except you're much weaker to a lot of other units such as range units spear units etc now the thing that really gives ethiopians a bit more of an advantage over the cumans is you do get the heavy camel rider which means you are getting that really nice bonus damage spike and so again the fact that heavy camel rider really shines in terms of dealing lots of bonus damage in imperial age means that if you are up against those cavaliers that you see sometimes in 1v1s you're going to be doing still a pretty good job against them and so it can be a nice unit you can go for but it is limited in castle age and not only that but it is still pretty limited in the in the Imperial Age as well. And so it's going to be very weak to 
ranged units. But again, if you're not seeing heavy cavalry, you're probably not going to make this as Ethiopians anyway. Where it would really come back to bite you is that without bloodlines, without lust armor, this is going to be a terrible raiding unit in Imperial Age. It's going to die pretty quickly. And so that's what's going to give it the one and a half star. It's nice to have it if you find yourself dealing with heavy cavalry. But honestly, if you're playing Ethiopians, again, you're probably going to want to go with Arbalist, fully upgraded halberdiers, and it's something that you just don't see very much with Ethiopians for all the reasons that we've said, so one and a half stars. Okay, now, right, those are going to be our only one-star civilizations, and now we're moving into our two-star civilization. And our first two-star civilization is the Mongols. Now, Mongols have fully upgraded camel riders in the Castle Age. That's very nice. The issue that comes with Mongols is when we get to Imperial Age, we're missing the last armor upgrade. And so we only have two Pierce armor. And honestly, that's not going to cut it very well because they're going to be very susceptible to damage from ranged units. Not only that, but in terms of having these support units to, to field an army where camels are the centerpiece... You have decent skirmishers, and that's pretty good. you got to like that, actually, because you are missing the last armor upgrade. But you do get Bracer, and that's pretty decent. But if for some reason, you need to field the spear line. So let's say your opponent is going for something like Knight Halberdier. One way you might want to counter that is by perhaps going with camels in your own spear line yourself. That's one way you can deal with it. And... The problem with that is just that you don't get halberdier, and so it's not going to be a very good fight because the halberdiers are going to really wreck the camels, and so these and so it's just not going to work out very well for you, and that's a major problem, and especially when you're missing plus two armor. If there are any range units on the field, you're going to find it really difficult to engage, and range units are going to be able to generally stay away from your skirmishers, which would be more of a backline unit. So it gets tough for the Mongols. And while there may be some arguments of, say, going Mangadai and Heavy Camel, that is a very, very, very expensive composition that can be difficult to get to. It might be possible in, let's say, less aggressive games on closed maps and that sort of thing. You might be able to go for something like that. And if you can, it's very strong. But a lot of times, thinking about the more common maps, open maps on the ladder like Arabia, Mongol camels are probably just not going to cut it. Okay, so next up on our list, we have the two and a half star civilization. And when we pluck this one out of the hat, we're going to find that it's the Turks sliding in at two and a half stars. Now, Turk. Camels are fully upgraded throughout Castle and Imperial Age. The gold bonus that you get with the Turks, right, where you have the faster production rate on your gold miners, it's not doing a ton of work here. The gold bonus for Turks is not quite as helpful in the mid game. Gold really isn't scarce, and now it might allow you to distribute a, full, a few more villagers, let's say, to a different resource, but not that many because you're basically getting five gold miners per every four. So maybe at best, you're probably allocating three to four villages elsewhere. It's not bad, but it's just not great. Now, that's not really what takes them out of the three-star category here. The problem with Turks is that you just lack really good support units to, to roll with your camel line. You don't even get pikemen, and you don't get elite skirmisher. And so your camels are really stuck out there. You're reliant on gold units to, to defend your camels, and that gets really expensive really, really fast. And you're going to burn through a lot of gold if you try to do that. You know, you're not getting, say, something like Arbalest, right? You do get, you do get good cavalry archers, but that's a very gold-intensive unit too extremely difficult to go for heavy cavalry archers and camels you do get fully upgraded champions but again now you're starting to eat into the food that needs to go into producing your camels hand cannoneers again another food gold unit generally with a supporting unit 
you don't want it eating into the production of your gold line unit. So you just lack the supporting army. And for me, that's what makes the Turks ultimately a two and a half star camel civilization. Now next, going into the three star civs. So now we're going to start to see some civilizations where you can feel pretty comfortable with making camels the bulk of your army. And we're going to start off our first three star civilization here are the Tatars, right? Camels fully upgraded throughout the game. You do have a nice food bonus once you start putting down town centers where you're getting extra sheep. And when you're Tatars, your sheep last longer. That can be very, very strong and and give you that extra food you need to produce units, get upgrades, do that kind of thing, or just get to the next age, and that can be very helpful. Now, where Tatars start to distinguish themselves from skirmishers, excuse me, from skirmishers, from Turks that get terrible skirmishers, is really when we start thinking about their supporting units in their army. You have fully upgraded skirmishers with Tatars. You do have halberdiers if you want to go for it. They're missing the last two armor upgrades, so they're not great, but... If you need them versus, say, Night Halb, well, you do have it, and there's something to be said for that. I'll also say that one of the really nice plays you can do with Tatars is that if you're going Archers in Feudal Age, with Tatars you do have Free Thumb Ring, which is a major power spike for your, for your Archer line. And so if you have Foot Archers and you want to go into a Camel Switch and, say, play an Early Castle Age, something like camel crossbow again it's going to be hard for you to tech into that long term because both of those units cost a decent chunk of gold however right if you're doing a camel switch and you have those crossbows left over free thumb ring is really nice to play in that early castle age where you can do actually a lot of damage pick off villagers with it and it's very very strong so i wouldn't be afraid actually to do a camel switch with Tatars, if you have some crossbowmen, I try to work with them together in early Castle Age. So it's a pretty, pretty decent unit. You can have some good comps, and that's enough for me to make them a three star camel sieve. Okay, next up, right, we are going to have. We're actually going to go into the three and a half star ranking here, and the first sieve we're going to see is the Chinese. Now the Chinese are very interesting. When it comes to the Chinese, it really comes down to making things a bit more affordable here and having a good support army. Again, camels fully upgraded throughout the ages. You have a great supporting army with fully upgraded skirmishers, fully upgraded halberdiers. You again, you do have some champions if you can go for it. They are they they are going to be full cost because you are missing supplies. And that can be a real bummer. I really wouldn't advise it. But you do have the trash units to support your army. But the thing with Chinese that I think really gives them a bit of an edge over Tatars is all your technologies are cheaper, especially as you go throughout the ages. So that's going to really help you afford all those really important upgrades on your camels. And again, thinking about camels as they play out in Castle Age, if you fall behind in your blacksmith upgrades, you might fall behind in your ability to to truly defeat knights and you want to be able to get those cheaper upgrades in imperial age so you can get your armor so you can actually start to use the camel a bit better as a raiding unit even though it's not perfect you'll still be able to do some decent damage right at the end of the day i think it's still a defensive unit but it is one that you can support as a mainstay in your army okay now next up we are going to have another three and a half star civilization and that's going to be the persians here persians are interesting so your camels are fully upgraded throughout the ages you have pretty nice eco bonus where your town centers work faster starting from feudal age and they work progressively faster castle age imperial age and beyond and in the beginning right it might compromise your economy just a little bit because you're needing to generate more food to keep up with your faster working town centers. But it does enable you to have a really, really nice boom going. You might get to Castle Age a little bit faster than your opponent. And that can be pretty helpful. I think that when it comes to camel production, 
it's pretty nice. Knights are a bit more expensive than camels, so that can be a bit more tricky, I think. But when it comes to camels, you should be able to get them out. But the reason that Persians are making it in the three and a half star on this list is that the Persians, they do get fully upgraded halberdiers, but it's the trash bow, right? The commander in technology with Persians allows them to take the gold cost off of their crossbows that only cost 65 wood. That is a very, very nice support unit. Commander and crossbows with Persians, I think are really low-key underrated. You're missing Arbalus and you're missing Bracer, but that's it. You're getting Thumb Ring and you're getting all the armor upgrades. So commander and crossbows are a decent unit for a unit that doesn't cost any gold. And that's really fantastic if you're making camels because you have a strong, strong support unit that can easily kill spear units. They can also have a pretty nice damage output potential against something like knights. You have a really good firing rate and it doesn't cost any food. So it's not really cutting into your camel production at all. Whereas skirmishers do cost a little bit of food and persons don't get great skirmishers anyways, right? When you want to defend your camel line, go for the trash bow. I really think that there's a, a solid synergy there with it. And you know what? Persians, that's going to do it, right? That's going to give them three and a half stars. Okay, now when it comes to Byzantines, are the Byzantines, right? They're going to be our next sieve, but are they a four star or a three and a half star? I don't know. What do you think? If you have an agreement or disagreement with me on this, leave a comment in the comment section below. But for me, it's four stars. Look, Byzantines have some limitations you miss bloodlines you miss blast furnace so your camels are lacking in their performance however you have a minus 25 percent cost discount that's food and gold being discounted that is very very strong it can enable you to get out a lot of camels and actually be able to produce them that's a good bonus to have, and it's also not bankrupting your economy. And not only that, but in an Imperial Age, and just in general with the Byzantines, you have such great trash units that are also cheap. Cheap skirmishers, cheap spears, the same 25% discount. It's just, you can field a really cheap army with the Byzantines and get pretty good value from it. And it's that value that you have there where you have an army that you can afford to attrition some units. I still wouldn't try to attrition camels too much because it's still a gold unit at the end of the day, despite the 25% discount. But when it comes to generating a big mass of units and doing it for a much cheaper price than any of your opponents, I think that makes the Byzantines a four star camel sieve and starts to get us into the blue blood territory okay next up we're going to have another sieve and it is going to be the malians and the malians well where do they rank here it's very interesting i gotta put them as a four star camel sieve i don't think that they quite get up to four and a half stars here's my rationale so your camel riders are generic fully upgraded in castle age that's fine. In Imperial Age, you are missing Blast Furnace, but with the Ferimba technology, you're getting plus five damage. So when we get down to the end of it with Ferimba, your heavy camels are basically doing plus three damage compared to fully upgraded ones. That's actually really, really nice because it's going to help you kill villagers more easily, and it's just going to help you do more damage in general. So it's a very strong not changing the game really so much against heavy cavalry, but if you're up against, say, other camels as well, having that plus three damage is going to be really good. Now, the other thing with Malians that's a really nice plus for them is that they have plus 30% more gold than other civilizations, right? So their gold is going to last a lot longer, and that can be really nice when you're making gold units. So you have a really high quality unit, and you're going to have more gold. To me, the problem with Malians is that I think your Imperial Age army composition, it's just a bit too awkward for me you don't have halberdier you have pikemen they do have a lot of extra pierce armor and so that can be pretty important i think when you are 
dealing with range units, but if you're dealing with, say, a Knight Halb army, that's just not helping you quite as much, and that's a major problem. Your Skirmishers are also pretty lacking because you missed Bracer, so again, that can be a problem, and so the Camel Scar play just doesn't cut it for me. I do think, again, if you can get to it, something like the Camels and the Champ Scarls that have the extra Pierce Armor as well, so the eight Pierce Armor Champions, that can be pretty strong, but again, it's just something that I think can be difficult to get to in a lot of circumstances, and when you're fighting in a war, right, you want a reliable army, you don't want an army that you can't count on, and so I just don't think you can count on getting there, and not only that too, but, you know, you're counting on getting Ferimba as well, you're not going to be able to get that, well, you can't count on always being able to get it as soon as you hit Imperial Age, you're probably going to be trying to go for it, but the game may play out in a very different way than you suspect, and this is one of the problems that Malians have, I think in general, is that your transition to Imperial Age is just a bit awkward with Malians, and it's a common it's a common refrain about the civilization, and for me, I think that's enough to make it a four-star Camel Civilization, not getting up necessarily in the four and a half, which is where we're going next, and we're going to go there with the Saracens, right? Now, the Saracens have plus 10 free HP on their Camel Riders and Castle Age, so you're going to be performing very well there, and your Imperial Age technology enables you to get another 20% for a grand total of plus 30 HP Camels. That's 170 HP on the Heavy Camel Rider. That is a very, very strong. You do have fully upgraded Skirmishers to support the unit. You don't have Halbadir, so you can't go Camel Halb. I think Camel Halb is usually a bit more of a rare combination, but when you have Night Sieves that have Halbadirs, you do definitely see it when they know they're up against a Camel Sieve because it is a decently strong composition. So I do think that's a problem for the Saracens missing the, the Halbadir. But you do have good skirms, and you can go camels with fully upgraded arbalist. Again, if you can have that composition, it can be pretty strong. Also because the Saracen foot archers doing extra damage to buildings, that can help compensate for the fact that Saracen heavy camels are not going to be very good at taking out buildings on their own. So I actually think that it's an expensive comp. Might not be one that you can get to as easily. You might need to use the market to try to help you get there and abuse the Saracen market bonus. But if you can get there, I think it can be very strong and start to expand right the mission of a camel-centric army. But again, it's still an issue. The eight extra HP is great, allowing you to tank a lot more arrows. But at the end of the day, I think even with Saracens, most of the time you're still going to find that camels are a defensive unit. They're just a very strong defensive unit, a very durable defensive unit. For the Saracens. Okay, so we have two civilizations left, and who are we going to do first? Well, let's start off with the Berbers. Now, the question is where to put the Berbers, right? Five star, four and a half star. Where do they rank? Well, for me, I've got to say it's four and a half stars. So the Berbers are fantastic. You have a 15% discount on your. Stable units in Castle Age, and 20% in Imperial. That's very, very good. You have a, a Camel and fully upgraded Skirmisher army that you can field. You can maybe try to field a Camel Genitor army. Genitors are pretty heavy on the food, though. I think it's usually much better to go with Skirmishers. You are missing Halbadir, so again, we have another situation where Camels and... And Halberdiers, if you need that trash composition, well, it's going to be not there for you. So that is a bit unfortunate. And the other thing about the Berbers is that when it comes to the missions that you're able to perform with them and their traits, well, they're fully upgraded, but they're, they're generic otherwise. So now the cost discount is really, really massive, and that's what's putting the, the Camel line in this four and a half star tier list. You can do some really, really nice things with the camels just based on the numbers alone. 
There's that old quote about war that quantity is its own quality and Berbers, right? Berbers are that to a T when it comes to their, their cavalry. I think that the downside of this unit is that ultimately it's still the case that the camel is a defensive unit. Even if you have a really good mass, you just don't have the really unique traits that it's going to take to get you to that ultimate super elite status. And we're going to find with the Indians, that is, in my book, the only civilization that can claim to be a five-star camel civilization. And let me tell you why now. So the Indians have plus one pierce armor in Castle Age. So that's really huge for being able to, being able to go up against armies that have ranged units be able to raid a little bit more you're still not going to be the greatest raiding unit because whereas knights will have plus four pierce armor you're only going to have plus three but it's still not bad the indians also get the imperial camel i'm going to get into that here in just a second and i will show you some footage and we'll do some comparisons here but the imperial camel is very very strong and it is a bit expensive and that's unfortunate but the Indians have a great economy where your villagers are cheaper. The Sultan's technology boosts your gold income. And that's another thing to contrast it with the Berbers. You're getting the stable discount, but the Indians, right, they're getting an eco bonus throughout the game. So you should have a lot more resources banked up. Whereas Berbers, you're really waiting on Castle Age to get there. And the Indians just have a much, much stronger economy. Now thinking about the support army, Right, Indians have fully upgraded skirmishers, that's great. And you can also go camel halberdier. You're only missing the last armor upgrade. And so your halberdiers, they're mediocre, but you can actually do it. And so it's nice to have that option in your back pocket. Now, something to be noted about the Indians is that you're missing plate barding armor, but you are getting a pierce armor in castle age and imperial age respectively. So you wind up having normal pierce armor. This is an interesting effect, I think, because on the one hand, you lack a little bit of melee armor, but the fact that you're getting to that six pierce armor, excuse me, that four pierce armor, right, on your camels immediately, I actually think can be a bit of a power spike because you're not waiting for that technology to come in and you're not having to pay for it, which means you can take those resources and basically go ahead and immediately invest in heavy camel and start saving for imperial camel as well. So... I, I think that I think that that bonus hurts their hussars a lot more than it hurts the camel line because melee armor mm, camels are mostly doing bonus damage anyways. So if you're in melee fights with anything other than cavalry, you're not playing the unit very well. It's not going to be no camel unit is going to be strong in that scenario. So I think that it actually can give you some nice windows with imperial camels, and again you have this great economy. But what really is taking it to the next level and really getting us on the map here is the fact that Indians, their team bonus, is their camels do extra attack against buildings. And that is very strong. It lets the Imperial Camel from Indians really become the only camel that is also a strong offensive unit. Now, does it perform everything just as well as a knight? No. The knight is still probably a better overall line for offensive units and Indians don't get them. But with the Imperial Camel, with the building bonus, right, with the extra Pierce Armor in Castle Age and then being fully upgraded in terms of Pierce Armor in Imperial Age, right, I think with all of that and the army to support it, the Indian Imperial Camel is the only camel that has the kind of offensive potential that you really need drastically and so i want to go ahead show you a little bit of that here and so you can see what i mean let's go to some game footage i want to show you how this fight gets a pal against a paladin you can already imagine that it's going to do very very well against the cavalier line but let's see right how the imperial camel does against the paladin take a look at it right here and we're gonna watch these two fellas have a battle here right as you can see right now this is really starting to look good for the imperial camel 
uh, left with 48 out of 160 hit points left. So again, right, right. When we were looking at the heavy camel rider, they had 20 out of 140, but the imperial camel rider, right? Basically, it's that plus 20 HP and a little bit more attack. It's leaving it with about a third of its HP left versus leaving it with about a seventh of its a seventh of its HP left, which means that Imperial Camel Riders are left with about double their remaining HP than the Heavy Camel Rider. So you can see from this test right here and that understanding that the Imperial Camel Rider is a really, really nice upgrade for the Indians, and it's going to make it a very strong unit. Okay, y'all, I want to give you a sense of how much the Indian bonus damage is going to be having an effect. And here we have 12... Berber heavy camels here, right? We can see that they're going up against a Spanish town center. And as you can see, this town center is standing pretty sturdy here. It's fully garrison and our camel numbers are getting fairly thinned out here. The castle still has a lot of its HP and we're gonna see all of our camels die here. And when we get to the end here, this town center should have about 65 to 66 percent somewhere in there of its hp remaining and right thinning down thinning down this town center really doesn't have that much of a scratch on it right so so as we can see right the heavy camels are not really giving us quite as much value there okay now Let's take a look at this test when we look at Indian camels. Okay, so now we're looking at Indian Imperial camels, and you might notice, right, that the Indian Imperial camel, right, we're going to have 10 of them because the Berbers have a 20% uh, cost discount to them. And as we can see, right, with the Indian Imperial camels, with just 10 of them, we've already taken out a lot more of this town center's HP we had before right we've done a lot better job it's already about to be on nearly a third of its hp we do start to see it slowing down now but the damage keeps being done our imperial camels continue to hack away at it and well i mean the proof really is here in the pudding right 10 imperial camels about half this town center to where it is on a lot less HP, right? We've taken about, as we can see, now we're down to about 700 HP. This town center is basically on the verge of death here, right? So we've taken out about 1,200 more HP from this, this town center, and we have factored in the Berber cost discount. Now let's run this situation back, and if we equalize the numbers here, Let's show you what we end up with. So you can see here, right? We're just coming in this a little bit with 12 Imperial Camels. This town center is going down fast as fast can go. And again, it's one of these things when we balance out the numbers here, uh, we're getting a lot of value on this as this town center is going to go down and it should jettison out villagers here momentarily and there you have it right okay everyone so i hope that we can see here right why the indian camels are just so so strong imperial camel it really is a difference maker the building bonus again really is a difference maker and basically indian camels are gonna not only be doing double the damage to buildings as heavy camels from another civilization but with the extra 20 HP, you're gonna be able to tank a lot more ultra fire, so it really does make it a great rating unit. So, right now that we have right the camel civilizations all sorted out, I'd be interested in what you'd have to say in the comment section below. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you think that there's an argument for the Berbers being another five-star civilization and joining the Indians? Do you think that maybe some of these civilizations should be ranked a bit lower, right? Be interested in your thoughts because these opinions they're really just all my own and my experience using camels in aoe2 but with that i'm going to go ahead and end the video and i'll see you out there on the ladder peace